you know. Do, yeah, do you remember of any of the imagery of, of what you saw back then? Oh, it was a beautiful mansion, southern mansion. Right. Uh, just almost identical to what you would see in the movies. Okay. And the ball was about as regal as you could get for the era. And the, the, they was more modern than what we even think for back then. Mm-hmm. Um, especially in weaponry. Uh, you know, you think of the muskets, ball and cap and all this, but they had a lot more modern weaponry than that. And, of course, now it's being noted in the Civil War era that they did have more sophisticated weaponry. And in what sense was that, Larry? Oh... I, I can't think offhand, but they had more than just the ball and caps. So you were kind of impressed with what you saw back there. Yeah. I mean, the battle itself, I, and strangely, I knew I was going to be killed, but it didn't bother me. The only thing is I got madder in hell <laughs> because they took so damn long to get me back and, and bring me back. Oh, so you were dead for a while. Oh, yeah. So, okay, let's go back. How do they take you from, let's just say this was 1960... What, what year was it, by the way? That I you... would have no idea. It, it probably was at least in the 70s. Okay. Let's just say it's 1970-something. Here you are in Virginia. How do they actually take you back to that date and time and place? I have no idea because I was, we never got into the time travel itself as to how it's manipulated, how it's done. on. It's all by computer. Right. Do you... you just go into the vortexes. Okay, do, oh, you go into the vortex. Do you remember actually seeing a vortex? Oh, I went through them all the time. Okay. Did, did you ever see any of the equipment around that was generating the vortex? Yeah, like the, like I told you yesterday, the one room in particular had just rows of consoles with people sitting at it, and the walls was just, just a mass of computers. Right. And uh, we entered from the middle of the room, mm -hmm. from the cleaning chamber, Mm-hmm. And once we had it was cleaned and had all of our clothes and gear on, uh, we entered in this doorway and walked down between all the consoles and everything. Right. And the people would, would just praise us constantly because of what we were and things we were going to do. And the vortex was out in front of them so many feet away, just a big circular item, and was just a massive raw, pure, harnessed energy. Was it uh, white in color, white, yellow? Kind of a white, silvery. White, silver. Yeah, it's not like in a movie where they show it like a liquid or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, where it bubbles out or anything else. I, I'm thinking of Stargate, that movie. Yeah. Now, the gate itself was similar to that. It was round? Yeah, but not quite designed that way. And uh, the energy just flowed outwardly, which, you know, because you're going out, it would. Right. And uh, we loved it. We called that uh, floating the, uh, soaring the, the vort. <laughs> we loved floating the, the vort <laughs> because you were in your own bottle and form. You weren't in the uh, time shuttle or anything, and you actually got to travel through it yourself in bodily form. And so to all those people there in the operations end of it, you were a hero. In a sense, yeah. And they, and I think most time they knew what well they had to know what mission was going on because it all had to be coordinated. Right. Everything had to be in its proper place. Each individual had to be doing the correct thing, or we're lost forever. Mm -hmm. And that happened. A lot of teams went out and was lost, couldn't get them back. Or within this vortex, you've got fingers offshoots. Oh really? And, and if you get off into one of them, you're you're gone forever too. Now, how would you know? Where the offshoot is. You just stay in the main chamber, in the main tunnel itself. It's like a wormhole. Right. And it's big and round, and you, you can see the offshoots coming up. And, but you're flying through this thing at, at <laughs> you know, billions of miles a second, right. wherever they're wanting to send you, especially into space. Did you have to keep your concentration high? I... And from what I can remember, I don't think so because I love the sensation it gave you going through this, and you, and especially the ones going to outer space. Mm -hmm. You could also see the universes flashing by wow. in all their brilliance and beauty. It was so fascinating, but it only took milliseconds. You know. How, well, how did you avoid the offshoots, though? 
Um, you could, like I said, you could see the fingers coming up with the smaller tunnels going out. Right. But somehow, some people would just get sucked up into them for I don't. I don't Maybe that was the early stages before they was perfected, but I never seemed to, I never had any problem with them. Yeah, so you would see them come and go. I to me, yeah, I could see them yeah. flashing by, All right. coming up. All right. Well, just like if you was driving down a road and all of a sudden the road, another road took off to the right or to the left or whatever. You, you just look at it at the side of your eye and say, goodbye. yeah, and just make sure you stay in wow. the middle. So wow. you don't get pulled off to either side. So when you went, to, say, to the Civil War era, did you see all of this uh, beautiful um, outer no, space stuff? that I don't recall. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think so, because I don't think it would be there. Okay. Because uh, if you're going back in time, I think uh, I have no memory of what it looked like, but something tells me that would be entirely different. Um, I can't explain it. Okay, so about... I know this is going to be hard to answer, but how many of these uh, trips do you think you made? I think I only made the one. I only went down for a specific reason, planted the information on changing certain battle strategies, plans, everything. So you think you only made one time travel trip? I think trip so. That you yeah. can recall? Yeah, that's all I can recall. So all the other things, though, would be space travel, right? Um... Because you, you told me yesterday you went to some other planets and things Space like that. Space travel or just going to other bases and installations to do different stuff. Okay. A lot of it was space travel, uh, even flying the, the spaceships, mm-hmm. the uh, small fighters. Mm-hmm. All right, so so you were successful. You you got killed, I guess, somehow. They, what, they send a team of people in, or how would you get back? They pulled me out. They just pulled you out? Yeah, they... They lock. They stay locked onto you. They can track you. Mm-hmm. And uh, once I went down and all bodily functions stopped, that's when they was to pull me out. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I said, it made me angry because the guy just he didn't do it quick enough for my estimation. How long? And, how, do, how long do you think you were dead? I don't know. Longer than I wanted to be. <laughs> <laughs> You know what you're saying, Larry, is that we have the technology and the ability to bring people back from the dead. Sure. They did it to us all the time because we, I don't know if because they needed to keep, well, yeah, they needed to keep us healthy and they needed to keep us around because of our abilities how did, how did and they, what all they was wanting to do. How did they bring you back to life? The only thing I can recall on one particular situation, whether it was this one or not, I can't remember, um, as I mentioned yesterday where they had this liquid-like stuff that was electrically charged. Uh-huh. And they would just pour it all over the wounds and into the wounds and everything else, and it would instantly heal the body. And how how this stuff works, I have no idea how it can re- re- reconstruct damaged and destroyed organs and all this. I don't know. But it worked. That's all I know, and that's all I cared about. So you you had something done to you. You came back, and then you were mad saying, what took you so long? Yeah. You remember that part? Yeah. Okay. I was really angry. Well, when you did you get a, a pay raise or a medal or anything like that for a job well done? I wish I would get I would have gotten one red cent out of all of this. Nothing. Nothing. Mm-hmm. People like us and a lot of them within the structure never got paid. Never. Never got and paid. And in fact, in real life they try and keep you beat down. They don't want you to get ahead, they don't want you to do to uh Oh, you know, they definitely do not want you to get ahead financially in any way. They don't and want really you to really make something of yourself. They don't want you to become very well known within your own community. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things they don't want to ha- you to rise up to, and and if you try, they'll, they'll find a way to knock you down. I know it, it's happened time and time and time again. Has and, it happened to you, Larry? Oh yeah. Once all this stuff started coming out, and then we could look back and talk about certain situations that took place, knowing that if it if it would have changed or we'd have done something differently, uh, we could have come out much better, much further ahead. But there was always blocks there to prevent it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, that is certainly something I've noticed with everyone I've interviewed is they're all struggling to some degree financially. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying we're poor or anything like that. I don't mean it in that sense. You, you're just not as well as what you think you could have been. Definitely. Right, right. They won't allow it. Huh. 
It, why, why is it? Do you think that by having wealth that gives you credibility, and with credibility more people would believe your story? Uh, well, I don't, I don't think that has a thing to do with it because there's been a lot of credible people that's come forward and they've just bashed them.